Uh, this money, will, or the $1.2 billion that has been approved by the World Bank, is for immediate needs. Uh, so when you talk of uh, strings attached, we are just trying to help countries. But the World Bank isn't a charity. It pushes a particular ideological line. I mean, what, do, they have to, what, do, they, do they have to do something? Do they have to further open up their markets? Do they have to further reduce subsidies? Do they have to take in more imports? I mean, no, I, I, the World Bank is definitely not a charity, and it's also, uh, but it's also a, an institution that does support the poor p people in this world. Uh, you know that uh, reducing working on poverty reduction is the central aim and, and, and tenet of the World Bank. So is it a band-aid over previous World Bank policies, which many argue have caused much of this crisis, the, the lack of subsidies, the opening up of markets, the forcing of farmers to grow cash crops instead of subsistence farming or food for their communities and so on. Are you just putting another band-aid over that? There's no fundamental change in the ideology underpinning it. Well, the, two things. First of all, the assistance is not a band-aid. 1.2 billion, which is part of a larger program of $6 billion of support uh, to, to, to farmers to boost agricultural production is very far from being a band-aid. Second, I want to note that the, the decline in investment in agriculture in the 90s was not just World Bank, it was worldwide. Many agencies, uh, even countries, decreased uh, their investment in agriculture because they were focused on education and health and trying to get people help. But they had to choose. They were made to choose between sort of subsidies and helping their farmers and perhaps uh, social spending, partly because they had to pay off their debts to the IMF and other international organizations. Is there no thinking within the World Bank or indeed your sister organizations that it's actually your policies that have led to this? I mean, Mexico used to be um, an exporter of corn. The Philippines used to be an exporter of rice. Africa was a net exporter of food in the 60s. But after decades of your policies, they're enormously food insecure. Isn't there some thinking about this? Well, let, let me say this. You know that uh, the World Bank has, has um, if you look at the record of the World Bank on agriculture, it is uh, true that, uh, like other agencies, we did decrease investment. However, uh, the World Bank has been very supportive of small farmers and, and generally of agriculture. It is true that we supported countries to implement policies that we felt would ensure macroeconomic stability in these countries, that would provide an environment for sectors like agriculture to but flourish. But you were wrong. I mean, you now you know, know you were wrong. But we are moving on. This is the future. We are focusing now on trying to make sure that this crisis is, is uh, resolved, that farmers are assisted to produce food. But is there an acceptance food. that the previous policies were wrong? Um, I, I, I really think that, you know, uh, harking back to, to these policies, uh, you know, when we are trying it's to focus on to solving these crises. But to understand the future, you have to understand the mistakes of the past, truly. L look, let me say this. You know, you have to look at what countries were also doing. I mean, the World Bank is not a monolithic organization that comes in to, to, to uh, make countries uh, do things. Countries have governments that also think through what kinds of policies do we want to implement. Yeah, but from and a very neoliberal agenda, from a particular ideological agenda, which many argue doesn't necessarily have the, the, uh, the best interests of local communities at heart, what it has at heart is a whole belief in the free market and globalization as being the answer to all the problems. It well, doesn't well, seem to be working. Well, let me, say, let me say this. The World Bank's agenda is to help poor people all over the world. That's the agenda. The World Bank has really been focused on this. But through a and particular it's economic paradigm, which many say has failed. It's time now to go back to local initiatives, to sovereignty of food for local countries, putting decisions back into well, can communities' I say, hands. Can I not. say something? Since I'm somebody from a developing country and I was a former minister of finance, in my country, Nigeria, we crafted our own program. We put it together. We put our reforms together. It wasn't the World Bank or the IMF or anybody coming to tell us what to do. We put it together in the years 2003 to 2006, and we invited the bank and the fund to come and support us. But Nigeria is lucky. Malawi is less lucky, or some other country. Malawi well, actually well, was forced to scrap its fertilizer program, and it led to a famine, basically. No, let me where, tell where you something that, that we're doing. I, I keep coming back to the point of what are we doing now? The essence of what we are doing now is we are boosting assistance to agriculture by $6 billion. We are fast-tracking $1.2 billion. We have $200 million in grant funding to help the poorest countries like Haiti, like Liberia, uh, uh, like, like uh, Djibouti, you know, to be able to have food and to have 
farmers uh, plant. Finally, can I come back to my first question? Are there any strings attached to, to this money? I don't know what you mean by strings. We don't have, we have, of course, the money has to be used prudently. The money has to go to those for whom we, it was meant, which means the poor people in the community. But economic policy doesn't have to be shaped. No, we are talking of immediate needs right now. So, and, and all we want is that the fiduciary standards for which, uh, you know, because uh, we, this money has to go to the right places for which we are known be maintained. And I think governments themselves are interested in doing that and making sure the money is well used.